This is Cannes, the dazzling luxury resort on the French Riviera. Once a year, Cannes takes on a special look and becomes the center of the motion picture world with its spectacular international film festival. For Sean Connery, who is usually seen on the screen as the adventure-loving James Bond, this festival brings a new kind of off-screen adventure. There's a roaring reception and ovation for Connery, an ovation that continues for his first major dramatic motion picture being shown at Cannes. The film takes him from the world of 007 to the stark reality of a British prison camp. The picture is called The Hill. See that hill? I noticed it as I came in. We built it special. A few tons of sand and rock and a lot of labor and sweat. Something tells me you're going to get in there, Will. It's hot on that hill. Hot. The road that brought the hill and Sean Connery to acclaim at Cannes was long and arduous. It started quietly enough about a year ago at the pleasant Spanish town of Almeria on the Mediterranean. That's where producer Kenneth Hyman assembled an international cast and crew for this Metro Goldwyn Mayer Seven Arts presentation. In the casual, colorful world of Almeria, there wasn't much suggestion of the grueling adventure that the 800-man company would live through when they moved out to the location area. As you head toward the outskirts of Almeria, the breeze is no longer cool. The sun beats down harshly. Living things become scarce. Then you enter a brutal baked waste, abandoned and unvisited for centuries. Temperatures soar to 120 degrees. On this broiling desert, a massive 20-acre set was ingeniously raised. In this scorching setting, the hill was brought to life. Sidney Lumet tells of the hardships. The physical hardship of the actual shooting is something that coincides with the physical hardship that's necessary in the film. And through it all, the caked sand, the windstorms that would be going on while we were shooting, the cracks in the lips, those were all for real. Sidney Lumet was the brilliant young director of The Hill. The Hill is the story of five men in the British Army. They had their own messing up in the Army itself. Uh, they've either been thieves or AWOLs or broken regulations in some way. And they have been sent to a British detention camp in the Middle East. Sean Connery plays a character by the name of Joe Roberts, who is no hero in any conventional sense. He's a man who's in that prison for having beaten the hell out of his officer. His part in The Hill involves the biggest chunk of acting that he's ever bitten off. Connery speaks of the tough location. We made The Hill as it would be in real life. We set up a camera on a crane and we started up running the five of us, which would be the ritual, and just kept running and running. The picture is called The Hill for a very specific reason. Basic punishment, once any sort of prison regulation has been broken, is going up and down the hill in full field pack in the desert until you drop. We had pack with, and kit bag boots and webbing equipment and tin helmet and everything. I suppose it was about 40 pounds. I believe that we lost weight. Others lost weight too. Kenneth Hyman was one of them. I think maybe the toughest part of a producer's job is getting a good project off the ground. It took almost two years to convince various and sundry people of the Hill had a, an enormous potential as a film. The labor and construction problems were difficult and exhausting. We needed tremendous heat. We needed tremendous sun. We built an oasis in the center of our compound, and we had to truck in approximately 22,000 gallons of water. The authentic physical hardships contributed enormously to the realism of the film, the mood, the feeling of the desert, and the hardships that these men did have to undergo. Connery's got, when he's called upon to use it, an inviolable sense of truth when he's really acting. There's a kind of sheer maleness on that screen that nobody has seen for a very, very long time. <laughs> on your feet, and you listen! No, I don't listen! We bloody use the desert people are you fighting and the paid gunmen, that's who we are! We're both regulars. You'd prop up dead men and inspect them if you was ordered to. You're right. All I know is that I can't do things that don't make sense to me anymore. You can. You can still live by the book. 
But it's outdated, stupid, and out of date. There were breaks between the tension of tough, demanding scenes. Sometimes easy talk. Sometimes a letter or thoughts of home. Then back to the hill. Directing is as close to conducting an orchestra as anything else. It's a question of taking 57, 100 disparate elements, various levels of creativity and craftsmanship, and unifying them into one point of view. I found that the harder the work is, the uh, easier the communication gets. You start picking up energy and keying from each other so that a mutual excitement develops and goes up and back. As the hill took shape on the Spanish desert, no one thought of awards or festivals. For 78 eventful days, there was only the sun and the searing winds and the story. The story of raw brutality and men with the courage to fight it. There had never been a more challenging location assignment. Inevitably, there were casualties to the heat. This was the price paid for realism. The unplanned payoff would come much later at Cannes. From the enthusiastic young production team of Kenneth Hyman and Sidney Lumet, the order of the day, every day, was, let's give it the good try. The stars did. Connery, Harry Andrews, Ossie Davis, Michael Redgrave. Everyone did. There was thirst and ache and sweat, but no tears. In the hostile desert, they were getting what they had sacrificed months of comfortable living for. The real thing on film. When the ordeal of the hill was over, the cast and crew returned to homes on three continents. The desert returned to silence. The stockade, which had known so much life and drama, was dead. A Spanish scrap dealer bought it. No one is sure what he did with it. At Cannes, it didn't matter. 